welcome to this fourth module of the PCR webinars on bifurcation PCI. My name is Goran Stanković, I'm from Belgrade, Serbia, and this year we set up bifurcation PCI educational continuum as a series of different educational formats combining PCR webinars, learning sessions at EuroPCR together with PCR online resources. Our first module was dedicated to optimal provisional stenting, second one on role of imaging and physiology, and the third one was on culot stenting technique. Today, our fourth chapter is a case-based step-by-step DK crash technique in bifurcation lesion. With me in studio are Professor Maciej Lesiak from Poznan and Professor Adrian Benning from Oxford, UK. So, Maciej, why do you like DK crash so much? <laughs> That's a good question, Goran, thank you. So I think the first, first thing, I'm really very familiar with this technique and feel comfortable because I don't do many complex bifurcations because it's just one tenth of all bifurcation procedures a year. So I know the, the, the procedure well and I feel that it gives me a lot of flexibility um, uh, and uh, relatively few limitations regarding, you know, the, the lesion anatomy, I mean, the, the size of the uh, branches, the, the angulation angle, and also what is very important from the safety endpoint uh, is that I, s I leave the wire uh, in the main vessel throughout the whole procedure. So this is very important for me. Preserves the access to the main branch. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, when would you do uh, use in your current practice DK crush as planned upfront stenting strategy? Well, rarely, if I'm honest. Um, I'm a big fan of the bif of, uh, provisional approach for bifurcation, and I would generally use a clot. Um, but there are lesions where particularly you've got a big diffusely diseased side branch, which is important hemodynamically. And perhaps similarly, diffuse disease in the LED, where you really feel you must maintain flow in both vessels at all times. And I think probably the control that the DK crush gives you under those circumstances, the predictability that the DK crush gives you under those circumstances is probably better to clot than clot. So that's probably where I would use it under those specific circumstances. But I do think you need to understand it and you yes. need to be com confident with it. So part of it and part of the role today is to understand that sequence, to understand the procedure and to give us the confidence to do it uh, slickly and efficiently. Yeah, so objectives of today's webinar will be to know when two stand strategies should be planned, uh, to learn the principles and sequences of DK crush stenting technique, and of course to learn the tips and tricks of DK crush. Uh, what we are discussing today, uh, I will use this nine, nice animation from Professor Shaoliang Chen to explain the sequence. So you wire both branches, predilate both, then you use adequately sized tent in the side branch with minimal protrusion inside the main vessel with balloon which is non-inflated in the main vessel. After deploying the stent, you remove the wire and balloon and you crush with balloon from the main vessel, you crush what is protruding from the side branch. <coughs> what is the difference compared to classical crush? Now you recross and then you do first kiss and the role of the first kiss is actually to remove the metal and preserve the access to the side branch. And after performing first kissing, as you may see, you remove again the wire and balloon from the side branch. And now you go classical with stent inside the main vessel. You deploy that stent. What is missing in this video, of course, is proximal optimization. That's what we learn in the meantime. And after proximal optimization, you recross trying to cross proximal or central, but that we will discuss later on. Then you do two-step infl uh, balloon inflation and you finish with final kissing and final pot proximally. So there are multiple steps, but to make it uh, a real life case, uh, Maciej, you brought a case from your practice, so please share that one with us. Okay. Uh, uh so uh, let me show the case 
of a 73 year old male uh, patient with recent uh, class 3 angina, so very symptomatic patients with a couple of risk factors like hypertension, diabetes uh, uh, type 2 and dyslipidemia. With uh, LV impairment, we don't know, there was no history of uh, previous MI, but this patient must have had the MI in, 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 in the past. With some elevation of serum creatinine and GFR uh, of uh, 43 milliliters per minute. Uh, and this is the baseline angiography of this patient uh, performed from radial approach with just diagnostic catheters. And uh, you can clearly see uh, that there is a tight lesion in the mid True portion. bifurcation LED diagonal. Yeah. So uh, just for our participants and colleagues following this webinar, this is live event, so you can use uh, questions and comment or discuss and suggest something that you want to be more extensively discussed. But let's start with Adrian. You said you will rarely use DK crush. Is this one of those rare situations and why? So there are anatomical features and there are patient features. So the two patient features that have kind of made me think about risk are the renal function and the left ventricle. So they're two high risk uh, aspects with regard to the procedure itself. And then looking at the angiogram, the RAO, which is on the left-hand side of the screen, which is a long segment of the diffuse disease in the LED. It's a big vessel. And on the right-hand side, we can see that diagonal. Where the, it's a, once again, it's a big and long vessel. And that length of the diagonal tells me this is important hemodynamically. It supplies a big proportion of myocardium. It's going to be more yeah, than 10%. It's actually the only diagonal that we see Correct. clearly. So it's definitely clinically relevant branch. Right. And if you look at the ostium of it, it's, it's very uh, severely diseased. There is a lack of density there. It's the sort of thing which is, I think with a provisional approach, you'd be very unlikely to leave that by it is, but as it is. So I think it's a two stent case. I think the other thing which might favor uh, a DK crush is the difference in size of the vessels. The clot is also slightly more difficult if you've got a smallish diagonal and a big main. So I think there are two features there. The, the ability to maintain control of the bifurcation where I can make sure I've got flow down both branches at all the times in this patient with an impaired ventricle. The diffuse nature of the disease and in particular the, the rather critical ostium of that diagonal which I think does look challenging to leave alone. Yeah, so to summarize plan to stand technique up front, Machi, you agree, what was your thinking when you uh, did this diagnostic? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, uh, exactly. I agree with the, what, what just Adrian said, that this lesion is really a very complex lesion with the involvement of the huge side branch, the, the only uh, side branch we have uh, for the LAD, the, which is the diagonal branch. Uh, and definitely you cannot fix this long lesion in a cybrant just with one stent position in the main vessel. It is of course possible to start with provisional approach because then you can modify your strategy if needed. But I think that the chance of losing the vessel uh, is too high to not to start from the, from the cybrant stenting first. Yeah, uh, just for our colleagues who follow the webinar, I'd like to briefly summarize. We have a consensus document published this year, uh, Adrian, you were the first author in one, Francesco was the first author in, in the second one, but in both we keep the same approach. So uh, dictated approach is actually side branch clinical relevance. And then if the risk of losing, estimated risk of losing the side branch is relatively low, not in this, in this case, as you said, then we start with provisional, and then after optimally performing provisional, if we need second stand, we can always use T-stenting, TAP, or culotte. On the other side, if we estimate that the risk of losing the side branch, this big diagonal is very high, then we go in this algorithm to the right side, and we can do either inverted provisional, which means we stand from the main vessel into the side branch, like the first step of culotte, for example, in this case, as you mentioned, we stand LED towards diagonal, optimize, and then we finish with culotte. But we can also do T or TAP, depending on angulation and operator preference. The other way is to start directly with double kissing crush, and this is why I think also in accordance with the recent guidelines, we should consider this technique as a viable option for people who would like 
to start by stenting the side branch first. So, Machie, please describe what was your strategy and why you decided to do uh, DK crush in this case. Uh, thank you, Goran. So we started with diagnostic and geography, and because of the symptoms of the patient, we decided to proceed with PCI during the same procedure, so we didn't stage the procedure. So you can appreciate on the still frame picture uh, the complexity of the disease with the involvement of a large, uh, actually the only side branch uh, coming from the proximal part uh, of the LAD, uh, with the involvement of the ostium protruding into the, 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 the vessel. So the lesion in the side branch, of course, is longer than, uh, than, uh, than three, five millimeters and should be covered with a stent. Uh, as I mentioned, the patient was uh, diagnosed with radial approach, uh, so we stick to the six fringe guide. Uh, we chose EBU 375 upon the anatomy of the aorta. We used two workhorse guide wires, no any special wires, because we were sure that we will manage to to wire the 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 the, the lesion with uh, two workhorse wires. And of course, we decided to do a two stack stand technique, which is a decay crush in in this yeah. case. Adrian, would you do the same, or you would do different? Do you agree with this? Yeah, I mean, I I certainly think we can treat pretty much anything radially, as long as we can get up there. Um, I think perhaps the only limitation with a six French guide is in a diabetic patient, if you wanted to use more aggressive plaque modification, perhaps rotablation, you are a bit restricted with a six French guide. And it does slightly cut down your options if things don't go quite as straightforwardly as you would hope. So perhaps I might use a sheathless guide, uh, which would give me 7.5 French with a six French hole. Um, but that might otherwise be the only uh, adjustment I would make under the circumstances. Yeah, thanks. So, Machi, what was the first step? Yeah, so first, uh, firstly, you need to predilate the lesion adequate, adequately sized balloons to avoid, you know, the uh, under expansion of the future stand. So, so we, tr we started with 2.5 and C balloon and we predilated both vessels. You see that uh, balloons are nicely open uh, both in the diagonal uh, and, um, and the ma main vessel also. So, so uh, this, we started with this predilatation. And it's really important that, isn't it? Because if you don't get that bit start at the beginning. If you, yes. haven't, if you haven't made space for your stents, particularly with the two stent technique, you're going to run into trouble later on. And so making sure that you know that those balloons are properly expanded. Yeah. expanded and it's usually, usually one of the questions at every bifurcation session, would you predilate side branch as mm -hmm. well? In this case, I think it's a clear you start up from two stent strategy. Uh, you use the workhorse regular wires. Uh, yeah. uh, there is a question from our colleagues. Do you have any tips and tricks how to avoid wire entanglement for complex techniques such as DK crush? Yeah, that, that's the very good question. You should just rotate the wire m maximally 90 degrees uh, right and left. Try not to r make a 360 degrees rotation mm -hmm. with the wire. Then, of course, in most of cases, you will not entangle your wire, but it is still possible that you may, you may, may so, so miss you. So sometimes you have to rewire um, again because of uh, problems with the liability. And making sure you know which wire is which. I mean, it sounds <laughs> an obvious thing to say. Yeah. But there's nothing more guaranteed to uh, tangle your wires than picking up the wrong one and pushing the balloon down and then jump, you, you soon you get yourself. So making sure that you know and or your assistant knows which wire is which uh, yeah. is really important. Yeah, what I try to do is uh, to have position of the wires on the table similar to wires that you see on the screen. So if it's upper one, lower one, or some people use two different kinds of wire, for example, uh, BMW and oh. run through, yeah. so different color well, helps you understand the difference. What we do, we just make a small band at the yeah. proximal yeah. end of or the Or make a small band, wire, put yeah. torque care. Okay, yeah. yeah. So careful predilatation yes. with, I mean, careful adequate predilatation with non-compliant balloon, but carefully not to create big dissections. And next step is, I see side branch stenting. Yes, so so you see the, the, the side branch stand in position with some small protrusion uh, towards the main vessel and of course which is very very important part of the procedure you ha you need to have a parked balloon in the main vessel because you need to crush the stand just after the implantation so you can see you can appreciate the two dots of the balloon already parked 
Uh, in most of cases, we park the main vessel balloon at the level of bifurcation. Some people go distally, go distally mm -hmm. uh, which is also possible, but uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 at least you, you can... It's important not, not be to be proximal. proximal because you'll have a, a big issues to, to, to yeah. crush the stand afterwards. Sorry, Machi, for interrupting. Very nice question coming again from our colleagues. Upfront drug-coated balloon of the side branch rather than provisional of the main branch. Any experience in this kind of cases with diffuse you will not consider this even? Mm, I think the stands are needed. LED is a big vessel. I, 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 I'm not very, fam uh, very familiar and very f and a big fan of, you know, of combining mm -hmm. drug looting balloon and, and drug And looting there are no, stands, so no data available. No data. This, this yeah. isn't I mean, the case for it, is it? You, yeah. This is a case where you're going to need to scaffold the bifurcation yes, properly. Yeah. Yeah. And drug looting balloons are great, but it's a yes. balloon at the end of the day. And so you're <laughs> and not going to get a result uh, and you risk losing that diagonal, yeah. not necessarily on the table, but you might, that's why, that's why stents came in. Exactly. We, we had uh, vessel closure one hour, two hour, three hours post-procedure. So you don't want that to happen. I think this, unfortunately, perhaps in, in that regard, needs two stents. Exactly. And I fully, fully agree with most of the people stating that DK crash becomes very popular uh, in addition to several other aspects also because they were able to collect evidence. So we have published evidence in which kind of lesions it works, with what it could be compared, how to be safely performed, image guidance versus physiology guidance. I mean, that group should be congratulated for really working yeah. hard through a series of randomized studies to collect the evidence. So we probably have also uh, space for performing this kind of drug-coated balloon studies, but not in this kind of lesions. I think this is what you said, a rare instances where we stand by planning two stand strategies up front. So minimal protrusion, that's also difference compared to initial classical crash. Of course. Uh, and then uh, stand implanta implantation. You see that the, on the left-hand side uh, down the screen, you see that I, I implanted the stand with a relatively low pressure, like 12 atmospheres. Then after deflation of the stand b delivery balloon, I pushed, I, I pulled a little bit backwards the, 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 the delivery balloon, and then I went uh, with a high pressure, uh, which is 18 atmospheres, just to avoid distal, distal dissection, which will only yeah. complicate yeah. the, the, and the whole you, procedure. You answered already another question. Uh, can you please always mention the amount of atmospheres you use? I think in addition to balloon device sizing, it's also good to discuss pressure that is used and reasons why some, sometimes you go nominal by uh, post dilating with higher pressure. Uh, question is, what is the problem in taking balloon after stentins placed in the side branch? I think you can also clarify for our colleague. Uh, if you don't position at the side of the side branch or distally, uh, when you with inflate, you will protrude inside the main vessel and the amount of protrusion cannot be really yeah. precisely determined. So it's better to be safely positioned at the level of bifurcation. And with believe me that it may be even impossible to cross the main vessel yeah. if, if there is a big protrusion uh, because it may happen sometimes during, yeah. you know, osteolar side yeah. stenting, which is a really a big disaster for a And patient. especially with yeah. diffuse disease, you have some plaque redistribution yeah. during stent implantation. So after stenting, I think it's nice to see this image from the visible heart. So for colleagues who are not uh, already seen this kind of images, this is pig heart and this is angioscopy view from inside coronary artery. So what you can see on this image, on the right side, you can see uh, side branch and stent which is deployed in the side branch, and on the left-hand side you see non-inflated balloon in the main vessel. So I'll try to play it again. You see minimal protrusion from the side branch, inflation of the stent, and then post-dilatation at the osteal part, just as you nicely explained. So now the next step is it's crushing. crushing. Yeah, it's stent crushing. Uh, you can appreciate on the left-hand side, which is a stent enhancement uh, 
um, image uh, from from the ma from the machine you can nicely see that the uh, um, crashing balloon uh, is um, uh, is crossing the the takeoff of the of the side branch, and this is 3.5 balloon. We can discuss the size of balloon in a, in a, in, a, in a few minutes. And uh, this balloon is open to crash what protrudes uh, into the main vessel uh, uh, with with this uh, NC 3.5 uh, balloon. I mean that's an important step, isn't it? Because certainly when I started doing this, I used to balloon that was too small in the main vessel and if you do that you don't fully fold the stent back into the diagonal and then you run a risk of putting the wire into the wrong place later on. The uh, contrast enhancement on the x-ray image there is really quite nice isn't it and it shows yeah. you that how careful you have to be about placing and the fact that what you've done is use a big balloon which feels braver but actually again it actually saves you time in the long term. Exactly. Yeah this is one of the weak points that we still need to improve the technique uh, by deciding and actually describing precisely the sequence of crashing. Because what I listened to uh, recent meetings is that people do it in two steps. Uh, uh, first step is they take a uh, regular size balloon according to distal main vessel diameter, then crush it, but it's actually partial crush, partial crush, because we know that geometry of bifurcations has much bigger uh, vessel size proximally, and then step down, decrease in diameter. It's not linear tapering. So because of that, we need to probably, in order to completely crush, take second balloon, which is ad adequately sized for the proximal diameter of the main vessel, like doing sort of pot. Mm -hmm. without stent in the main vessel. And I think it's nicely illustrated in the visible heart image. You see here, if you use balloon, which is sized according to distal main vessel, this is actually what we don't appreciate on angiogram. But look when you come closer that you really don't completely crush the stent and you have some metal encroaching still the main vessel. Uh, lumen. So we probably need to uh, modify this step and either do what you uh, suggested from the beginning to take bigger balloon, crush with nominal or lower pressure yeah, exactly. across and then pull it back and crush full size proximally. So this is exactly what, what we did. So we took a bigger balloon sized for the proximal part of the vessel, but of course you cannot go very high pressure having uh, part of the balloon in the distal main vessel. So we first just crushed the stand with the uh, 10 or 12 atmospheres. Then we pull back the balloon, park it before the car carina, and then go high pressure to, to crush it adequately. I mean, that still frame shows it very nicely, doesn't it? At about three o'clock, you can see how, how easy it would be for a wire to slide down the back of that stent yeah. and, and, and down into the diagonal. So you don't want that to happen. That's not yeah. what you want. And that's, that picture actually, that still frame shows it very nicely. We have a good afternoon from Lithuania and they are happy to, to see us back with webinars. And thank you very much for following us. So question is how much of stand protrusion is optimal but safe? Maciej, you are the expert here. I think that the point is that the whole stand with the whole circumference protrude into the main vessel, not partially, but, but the less the better. Yeah? So, so I'm, I'm, I try to just to using the stand enhancement, you know, mm, uh, uh, X-ray uh, imaging uh, to protrude, but as, as less as, as little as possible. Can we measure in millimeters, two no, millimeters? I say no, it's just, you know, just my it's you know, a eye view. Yeah. <laughs> two, two or three. <laughs> two or yeah. three millimeters maximum, just if you don't have stent yeah. enhancement software. One of the things we have to remember is these are three-dimensional. Yeah. Um, it, it's yeah. always very, it's, well, it's easier when you draw it on a piece of paper. But when, you're, when it's moving and yes. three-dimensional, what yes. may look like two or three millimeters in one view may only be not enough in the other view. So it's important that you find the right views on your x-ray to be sure that your position is correct. And if you cut, cut it too fine, it's quite possible that you will miss. Yeah, uh, Adrian, this is, I think, uh, along this uh, comment question for you. Uh, what is the downside of a long protrusion? Well, the downside of a long protrusion, I think, is firstly this phenomenon. Yeah. Um, I think that there is a risk to that. And uh, ultimately, you're, you're also going to end up with three layers over a long 
portion, aren't you? Which has then got to be crushed back. I don't think it's the end of the world with a long, and, and you know, that was the, the original description was with, a, exactly. was with a long protrusion. And one could argue that of the two, I take a long protrusion rather than no protrusion. So <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to have a protrusion. Um, yeah. But I, I think crossing is probably easier if it's not long. Yeah, exactly. and another very important issue is if you protrude a long stretch of the vessel, covers the long stretch of the vessel, and then you should aim to cross, we'll discuss this later, yes. the, 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 the proximal or, or the mid strut of the, of the sideburn stand, then you will create a very long neocarina neo yeah, with, with after implantation of the, of, the, of the second stand, if you protrude a lot into the main vessel. So that's also a very, I, I think, undesirable Unfavorable, effect yeah. of, the, yeah. of this. Of I mean, the, certainly if you end up going behind that you will end and you've got a long exactly uh, uh, then you will definitely end up with a big spike of a new, a new career which is definitely not desirable so that i think it is it's almost an insurance against and that it really. remains inside the main vessel forever yeah. so yeah, once you create it it's permanent it stays. Uh, not along with this technical but i think it's nice clinical question should dk crush be applied to STEMI case that is suitable for this technique would you do it in STEMI? Why not? I, I, I'm not, you know, with STEMI, the, 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 the most important thing is flow. Yeah? So if you obtain TME 3 flow and you have some lesion in the, in the side branch, you, you, you don't need to care about this. Yeah? But if there is a, a really a complex lesion yeah. calcified and uh, uh, with diffuse disease in a large side branch, then of course, why not? You can to use preserve the side branch. Course, I have to course, say, yeah. I struggle to find a thought of where I would do that. I, I probably wouldn't. I mean, yeah. I just. I think when in STEMI, I'm trying to do simple things. Yeah. Uh, I'm exactly. trying to contain flow. Exactly. I'm not looking for an hour and a half case. Um, and I might uh, perhaps leave the vessel just dilated and come back the next day and do a DK crush. So I, 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 I would be slightly hesitant about DK yeah. crush in STEMI. So to answer our colleague, most probably not. But if you don't have other solution, it's uh, yeah. possible. It certainly wouldn't be the first one I did either. <laughs> not the first Definitely one. Definitely not, yeah. Okay, so we answered most of the questions. Please uh, keep sending questions. We have uh, here really two experts who can really help us better understand the technique and when to apply, which is, I think, even more important. Uh, Machi, let's go back to your case. Okay, so... Uh, let's move to, to the next step. So again, this is the position of the balloon and I mentioned that we did, did it in a two steps with the high pressure and the proximal part. And then it's uh, a time for uh, recrossing uh, because you, uh, you, you, you have noticed that during crashing I re usually remove the wire from the side branch. Some people leave it. Uh, I do not recommend it as a, as a you know, routine strategy. It may work in, in most of cases, but uh, this is how I do it. I remove the wire. So you, you have to rewire anyway. Uh, so you have to pull back the wire after, after the crashing. And the first thing what I do after the rewiring uh, is to post-dilate or, or open the struts with high pressure and, uh, and, uh, and see balloon. And now we come to the point that it is very, very important to recross the proximal strut, not a distal strut like in culotte or, or, uh, or provisional strategy, or the mid part, mid part of, the, uh, of the stand. Yeah, we have some nice images of uh, yeah. John Ormiston. Yeah, Maybe you can very... use this to exactly. help people this is, better understand. This is a very, very nice and instructive uh, presentation of what may happen when you crush the stand, especially when the protrusion is uh, quite uh, quite uh, on a big uh, uh, long in a, in a main vessel. You see that the red arrow points uh, to the to 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 some some gap, gap not mm -hmm. covered with the side branch stand and then you can imagine Im Im imagine that if you recross through the distal strut you will land with your wire within this gap and then if you do the kissing you will just increase this gap instead of you know doing the the right procedure so the whole carina area and the proximal part of the side branch will be not covered with a stand and a, and a drug. So there was a, 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 a source of future, you know, restenosis. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Anything I was thinking of well, a think practical question, which is one of the things that we face, which is you cross with the wire yes. and then the balloon doesn't go. Yeah, that, 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 that's also a very good question. In most of cases, in, 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 in my experience, uh, I just passed one or, or, uh, uh, the wire uh, under one or two struts of the main vessel stand, which may mean that you need to 
post dilate again. So w w what I start, the first thing I do, I post dilate with a slightly bigger balloon. Then if I'm not under the struts uh, with my wire, it makes uh, the recrossing easier because I open the struts. So repeat uh, the point. I mean, certainly what I've, I, 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 similarly, I very rarely force it now. I will usually perhaps leave that wire there and take another wire and, and just see what that, and it's amazing strut. how often the balloon just flies straight down because you, your wire has gone somewhere you didn't expect it to. So the balloon technology we have now allows these balloons to track yeah. pretty easily. And there's usually a reason why it doesn't yeah. track. And I think knowing, that's why, it's one of the reasons why imaging during complex uh, exactly. ECI is so helpful, because you understand better why what you're doing isn't working. But the, what we used to do, and of course when we did classic crush, we spent a lot of time forcing balloons yeah. uh, into places probably where they didn't want to go and shouldn't have been. But yeah. just, that's how we did it. And, but and that's I think... Yeah, that's, I think it's extremely important to repeat the value and the importance of pot. In any kind of main vessel stenting, you should do pot in order to achieve to diameter, stretch the cells, to stretch the cells, to optimally oppose, and to open stand proximally according to diameter. Also, in your image that you showed from John Ormiston, if you do adequately sized uh, pot, pot then you will decrease the amount of gap that remains at the end of that pot because you will open stand in front of the ostium, you will open cells, so probably also recrossing will be easier than if it's without pot. And that, that was a very nice question from one of our colleagues. Should we always uh, crush with non-compliant? Uh, I think especially, for example, in the left main, it's better to use compliant than non-compliant because by increasing pressure, you increase diameter much more than with non-compliant. So if, you are, uh, if your landing zone proximally is long enough, if you can stay inside the stand proximally, then probably compliant is better choice than non-compliant. I don't know what is your opinion. Um, in the main, I would probably go with non-compliant balloons. I, I, I like to kind of make sure everything is properly out and I make sure the right size is there and I expand it hard. Yeah. Um, so, so high pressure in the main with non-compliant balloons. For my finishing kiss, uh, I think there, there may be arguments during the uh, procedure, but when I finish in the left main, I generally would use non-compliant balloon at high pressure. Generally, we don't need a very high pressure just to move the struts of the stent, but with a complex lesion like this or any complex mm -hmm. bifurcation, uh, usually we deal also with a very complex and calcified plaque. That's why, and with the profile, good profile of current modern NC balloons, I don't think there is a special reason to, 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 to go for regular balloons. So I also mm -hmm. uh, take the, the NC balloons uh, for, for this kind yeah. of... Yeah, so the, general the, recommendation is still non-compliant. Yeah. And uh, it's not wrong to use compliant. The one thing that's different is the non-compliant balloons don't wrap, do they? You, can, you can't use a non-compliant yeah, balloon twice. Yeah, yeah. So if you, it, it's not unreasonable perhaps to use a uh, standard balloon at the beginning because it's going to have to cross two or yeah, three times. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because once you've used a 3.5 or a 4 non-compliant, it won't go down any, you know, it's, yeah. it's not going to go down again. I mean, so definitely... once you are there, inflate, achieve adequate diameter and then deflate. But definitely for pot itself, especially with provisional technique, you don't need an NC balloon. You can just use a regular balloon and, and this is it. Okay, let me show on visible heart what we just discussed. So in this case, this is central recrossing. Yeah. So it was not proximal, but it's central recrossing after crash. And now you see balloon also in the main vessel and then simultaneous inflation of both balloons. Or you can start with uh, uh, separate inflation in the side branch. But what is the most important is this image now. You see that by first kissing, you actually remove the metal from the ostium of the side branch. So you get rid of double layer of metal that you have in the classical crush. And this is the major advantage, I think, of double kissing crush, that you actually simplify further steps after this one by completely removing the metal. I asked uh, Professor Chen once, isn't it uh, easier to do just a simple balloon inflation through the struts at the ostium? And he said that it's not because by inflating balloon only inside the ostium, you actually shift some metal inside the main vessel. And that metal in their study compromised further steps in the main vessel. So he said it's better to do kissing. By doing kissing, you put carina in the center and you don't permit metal from the side branch 
to enter it's into the... It's almost an investment, really, isn't it? Yeah, to, uh, yeah. To make it easier, in that crucial step, really, exactly. the final kiss. Exactly. Yeah. And the uh, next step after this is yeah, actually... Yeah, after proper kissing, we've usually NC short balloons. Uh, uh, it's a time to implant the main vessel stent. Uh, so I chose the, the drag looting 3 all over 38, which is... Longish? Uh, uh, yes, a little bit long, uh, but uh, uh, I, I did it uh, on purpose. First, the size of the stent is taken according to the distal reference to avoid... Uh, uh, dissection uh, in distally and any 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 uh, shift of the of the carina, uh, and uh, why I, I chose this uh, this a little bit too long perhaps stand the first you need a landing a proper landing zone for pots uh, at the proximal part uh, of the, of the vessel mm -hmm. so check what kind of balloon do you have on your shelf whether you have eight millimeters or perhaps sometimes it's only fifteen so so it will be and then. Uh, I perhaps go a little bit too distally. With, we cover the, the vessel distally to the to the bifurcation, but I also did it on purpose because there is not a big penalty with current drag modern drag loading stents. And if needed, if I have issues with recrossing and putting balloon for a second kissing into the side branch, then I can anchor a balloon in the, within the stent of the main vessel and thus help. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting uh, my yeah. gear into the into the side branch. Yeah, wrench. it's it's excellent and good timing. There is a question from one of your colleagues: uh, Do you remove NC crushing balloon before rewiring, or you leave it in the main vessel after crushing, and at the same time try to rewire? You can do both. Of course, it's uh, faster if you manage to do it leaving the balloon in a main vessel. But a little bit more difficult yeah, sometimes, so especially when you use six French. More devices inside the stand. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't do that. No. Uh, so, so technically, it's possible, it's doable, but I think it uh, it will do a complex procedure simply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what to do if recrossing is not immediately possible? I like the word immediately, so gives us <laughs> some time for. Uh, Different uh, options. There, there is a couple of options. First, of course, post dilate with proximally to the bifurcation with the bigger, bigger balloon, and we can repeat it and repeat it again and again because this is really, really very important. If this does not work, try to find another um, strut, uh, take a different wire or use the same wire and try to recross again. Then there is a less chance you go under the struts if the stand was malapose. Then if not, if this, with this case, I would put the um, anchoring balloon into the mid portion of the LAD, which is safe because LAD is already stented, so the, there is no, 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 no big risk of damaging the, the vessel. And you, using those three uh, techniques, I'm pretty sure that almost 100% uh, success can be achieved um, with rewiring and getting mm -hmm. balloon for the for, for the side branch. Uh, Adrian, any other tips to to you add? Can change uh, the type of wire, can't you? I mean, you are perhaps increasing the risk of getting mm -hmm. behind the stents, and I think, mm -hmm. but ultimately there are cases where you, you do need to change your wire, and you just need to be really careful. And about sequences it. to go from workhorse to hydrophilic, yeah. I guess, huh? yeah. and then to like stiff one. Yeah, well, I would, I would do something like a Pilot 50 or something like pilot that. Pilot 50. Perhaps this is also a good point to mention about the imaging, because okay. imaging can exactly. help. Uh, to see where you are uh, of course, using uh, with your device OCT, you can really find whether your wire gets under the struts or it's behind the stent. Uh, and uh, and uh, that will explain why you are not able to recross uh, and, and open the, the, the side branch. So, so imaging al al also helps very much in this kind of situation. And any preference, uh, OCT or uh, uh, IVUS? Uh, mm, it's uh, for rewiring. Or stent enhancement. Oh, okay, for rewiring guidance, it's possible. You can use OCT, but of course, mm -hmm. it's you know a little bit time consuming, contrast, etc. So in most of cases, we use just IVUS, good IVUS, and, so and it, it can show you very. Use the very technique that you are more familiar yeah, with. Yes. Because OCT can probably gives you, gives you better pictures. Better for that, picture, of it? course, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All of these things take time, um, but I think OCT for wiring is probably better than Ivers. Uh, we have two questions, one from Philippines, one from India. I'm just reading the questions. Is proximal crossing must for first and second kissing both, or it applies only to second kissing? 
I think you already answered, Def but it's better to summarize. to the first, if yes. proximal to the first, because in decay crush, once you post dilate with the first kissing, then the, the chance of distal crossing yeah. is very, very, and you, very low. And you really yeah. cover more this gap at the carina side of, of bifurcation. Exactly, so the proximal cross is most important uh, yeah. as for the, you know, first, the point of, uh, yes. of crossing. But also for the second, I think we should recommend yeah. the central or proximal, we should not uh, go distal because, as you said, with nice new generation balloons, if you go distally, you can still increase the gap. You correct it partially with the first kissing, and then if you cross distally, you can again create bigger gaps. So it's better yeah, to... Yeah, the gap still may yeah. exist after kissing, yeah. so yeah. If we need to summarize in the simple way, for every other technique, uh, distal cross, for crash or any variation of crash, proximal or central cross, yeah. okay? And depending on the length of protrusion, probably more proximal or more central. If it's short uh, uh, protrusion, probably more proximal. If it's longer protrusion, then uh, central. central. And I think this is, uh, this is an acceptable way to perform crush and then avoid or decrease the risk of creating huge gap. Uh, balloon for crushing should always be longer than diameter of the side branch. Longer. So you need to go across the whole mouth, I guess. Ah, okay. I guess yeah. probably, but you yes. can do two. But you can inflate it twice. But ideally, yes. Would be hard to find a balloon that's that small in length. I think. Yeah. Any kind of uh, DES. This is also a question. What kind of DES should I use? Uh, does any it make new generation difference? then stretch DS is, is, is possible. So I don't think any any difference and no data in, in literature. So just what what you have on your shelf. So yes, I guess you want to think. I mean, the things that uh, you might want to wonder about are obviously radial strength, the radial strength of the proximal uh, uh, mm -hmm. struts. If you're perhaps you want to avoid longitudinal shortening, that might be something that you might think about. Uh, you want radial opacity is helpful. We've seen we've seen that when we're positioning our balloons. They're the things that you might be thinking about. Not necessarily the drug, but the mechanical properties and the sizes yeah. of the cells. And one of the important things, of course, when we size our uh, main vessel um, stent, is to make sure that we can get sufficient dilatation proximal to the yeah. to the uh, yeah. to the branch. So if we put a a 275 uh, in, we can't get that up to four in the proximal vessel. Exactly. And if you had a huge diagonal, for example. Exactly. So we need to think about that, and that can be challenging. We need to make sure that we know our stent cell uh, sizes and our uh, inflation um, recommendations. Yeah, uh, I saw myself, and I think I already uh, told that uh, some time ago, uh, in the visible heart, we use the small side stand for the side branch, and when we try to achieve maximum expansion in the proximal part of the main vessel, and it was really peculiar that even if you use very large balloon side, size, after deflating, it nicely opens, but after deflating, a recoil is such huge that you actually have floating struts mm. non-opposed in the main vessel. So you need to know the device that you are using. There is a question, uh, is DK crash better with thinner struts? Uh, uh, you already answered that oh, question. Yes, yeah. But I think it's very important to read the article of Nicolas Foan and his group from International Journal of Cardiology 2016, because he really compares uh, available newer generation DES and maximum capa expansion capacity for each of them. And I think you should print that table and have it uh, in your lab in case you have doubt. You can really see uh, how much you can expand. As you said, uh, 275 has certain limits and you can really uh, think of that first before implanting. Uh, uh, Machi, I think this is a direct question for you. What do you mean with anchor balloon? How to proceed? Uh, okay, can you so please yeah, step by step yes. explain how to do it? So if you have problems with delivering the, the side branch balloon through the struts of, this, uh, of the main vessel stand, I go with the, you can do it with six French. Uh, guiding catheter, so I go with the small balloon, like 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 here, for example, you know, with a balloon uh, like three all for for the LED short one. I park the balloon uh, in the mid portion of the LED, but in a part covered with a stent, of course, not to damage the the the, the vessel, uh, and then inflate balloon eight ten atmosphere 
which gives me a really a great support for my fixes for, the position fixes of all the devices position of the of the guiding yeah. catheter and then and the I can try is, to push yeah. uh, m uh, with more f uh, forcefully the the, um, the side branch balloon to to get uh, into the into the side branch and it works in in majority of cases i just point out the beauty of that balloon position yeah. so your stent has been sized to give you the opportunity to do the pot there's enough stent proximally so that you're not injuring the vessel approximately because it's covered by a stent. Mm -hmm. And the distal marker is in the right position yeah. to not shift the carina and cause pinching uh, of, of the main vessel beyond the diagonal. So that's you know, it's exactly where you want it to be. And you've obviously found the angle that, that suits that well. But that step, I think, positioning the pot balloon is kind of underestimated, underemphasized, exactly. I think, generally. Exactly. So, so this is a pot after main vessel stenting uh, with 3.5 balloon before you rewire again and uh, proceed to the second kissing. Because again, if you do not pot, uh, if you do not optimize the proximal part of the, of the stent, mm -hmm. not oppose well the struts, you can get with your wire under the struts of the stent and damage the stent. So uh, only then, after POT, after pot, you can uh, do the kissing uh, with two, and mostly, in most of cases, short and C balloons. And C balloons. Believe me that in DK crush, it's easier to recross than the regular crush because you don't have to recross three layers of the... Exactly. Uh, of the, of you the remove stand. the struts yes, with the first kiss. With the first uh, kiss. Some tips and tricks on kissing sequence. Yeah, of course. This is also very important. So what I do, I start with the high pressure post dilatation of the ostium of the side branch. So let's say with 2.5 balloon to 18, 20 atmospheres up to uh, RBP pressure. Then I go down with the pressure and inflate the main vessel. Uh, so it, I end up with uh, 12 atmospheres in both balloons and you yeah. size the balloons according to the distal reference uh, of those two branches. So say 2.5 for uh, side branch and 3.0 for, uh, for the LA. AD. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is how I do it. Yeah. Anything to add? No, I think it's the same side, way you side do it. First, yeah. I'm perhaps not quite as high, high pressure in the, with the final sort of kissing mm -hmm. atmospheres. I'm maybe only six yeah. to eight, but yeah. so, uh, certainly side branch first. Yeah, because the major role of kissing is uh, okay first to optimally expand better this proximal part. But also by simultaneously inflating two balloons, you shift, you position carina, which is shifted in the center. With separate inflations, you always push carina in one or the other direction. And then when you do kissing, as you said, moderate or uh, 10, 12, 14, you actually position carina and you reestablish flow as it is in natural bifurcations. Uh, I think it's important to comment also on this question. I think it's not difficult to recross and rewire big crash stent, but recrossing two millimeter crash stent can be challenging. Yeah, but who crushes, you know, two millimeters uh, stent in a two millimeter vessel? So never, never, I, I, ne I would never do this complex so technique for that small vessel, yeah? So if you need stent two millimeters, try uh, to do something course, provisional something and else. don't start so, up front to stand technique. So it's clearly in the recent guidelines of EBC that it's only for a large uh, side branch, uh, very important side and branch. And with diffuse disease. Diffuse disease, of because, course. Because, uh, you know, we were surprised also in the EBC 2, also in the Nordic 4, when we tested culot or crash against provisional in diffusely diseased large side branches, there was no difference in clinical outcomes. So we should keep in mind that one when exactly. we discuss non-left main Keep it open, keep it simple. I mean, certainly for a 2.0 vessel, as long as it's open. Uh, and you can, you know, I think the, the art of keeping vessels open is a, little, is a little forgotten. You know, long inflation with a balloon, often that will be enough. It's struct it, it can uh, restructure the dissection and it'll keep it open. Exactly. That's all you need. Exactly. And we learned at the time of balloon and geoplasty that uh, if you keep balloon uh, inflated for several minutes, you actually heal those small dissections yeah, exactly. and you achieve result which is not stent-like, but those vessels remain patent after that and there is no clinical consequence. So second kissing and... 
uh, final pot. Uh, final pot. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I think this uh, stand enhancement uh, imaging is very important because now you see a balloon is li even a little bit uh, bigger. That's that's the first thing. Then keep in mind that uh, your pot balloon should cover the whole length of the stand. Sometimes you need to do the pot twice at the level of bifurcation and then go proximally to oppose the proximal struts of the, the stent. The purpose as well. here is to achieve a round lumen in the main vessel. So instead of having perhaps a, a dog bone, a sort of figure of eight, where you've, when you've achieved mm -hmm. your kissing, you're now trying to get a proper round lumen. And we think that that's probably better. Yeah, I very often repeat that kissing is great for bifurcation area, but not for the proximal right. part of the main vessel. Yeah? So you have to correct this deformation with a properly sized uh, pot yeah. balloon. Uh, I think we should repeat again which pressure is used during kissing because there is a question what amount of pressure should be applied while kissing balloon inflation during simultaneous and sequential inflation for decay crush and for provisional. Is there any difference? So again, there is no clear data in no. literature, so I can only say what I do, how I, how I do this. So I go high pressure with NC balloon for the side branch, like 18, 20 atmospheres, depending on the rated bur burst pressure of the balloon. Then I decrease the pressure in the, in the, in the side branch and go, go for simultaneous inflation of above 12 atmospheres with two NC balloons sized according to distal reference of the uh, both distal branches, uh, and this is uh, this is uh, how I how I do it. You do you said yeah, the same, it's a little similar. slightly the, lower. The two exceptions, I guess, I'm going to be much more gentle when I haven't got a stent in the in the side branch. Yeah. And I'm probably going to be more aggressive in the left main at the ostium of the circumflex. Yep. And yeah. I'm looking at very carefully, and I, if I'm not imaged, I'm looking very carefully at what the expansion of the balloon is in the ostium of the circumflex. Yeah. You know, I think that is very commonly underexpanded. Yeah, Adrian, you are, I think, one of the world experts for physiology-guided procedures, and you understand that much, much better than I think any, anyone else, except for maybe Javier. <laughs> kind of so that, but. when would you advise to use physiology in complex uh, two-stand strategies? Um, well, it's, it's, I think you can use it where you have an osteal pinch. I mean, I think that's probably the, the uh, particularly perhaps... Like the side branch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So an osteal pinch the side branch, you've got good flow. Do I, do I need to upscale this procedure now to a two-stand, yes or no? Um, and I think that's a good way of doing it, where you often find that you don't need a second stent. Um, I think there's good data to support that strategy. Um, I think physiology generally is a way of assessing our stent result, even in any context, is probably mm -hmm. under uh, yeah. em emphasized. I think there are exactly. uh, information that we can get from using FFR or IFR at the end of a st uh, stent procedure to see whether we've done as good a job as we think we have. And often it's not quite as good as we would have hoped, and perhaps a little bit of extra work, extra post dilatation, uh, perhaps sometimes an extra stent to cover a geographic miss, may actually significantly improve the, the final result. So I think physiology and imaging in, in combination Combined. both have roles. Yeah, but I think it's very important to clarify for uh, our colleagues following this webinar. I was very interested when I read the article coming from Korea about FFR evaluation following two stand techniques. I don't know if you had possibility to read that article, but they did crush and they didn't do kiss. They measured FFR in the side branch and mean value was 0 0.94. So if it's provisional with 0 0.94, as you said, I think you will not put second stand probably. But then we know what is the outcome of two stand techniques without final kiss. Yeah. What's important when they did kiss after and they repeated FFR, it just went to 0 0.96. So no much of difference in functional value, far on the safe side, 94, 96, but we know clinical consequences. So irrespective of physiology assessment, steps require and mandate kissing in any kind of two-stand technique that we are using, and I think this should be a clear that message. Is the differentiation between the acute result and the risk of stent thrombosis and the long-term result and the risk of recurrent symptoms. We know that stents which are not properly expanded have a high risk of stent thrombosis, and we Even must avoid that. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, before we finish this procedure, I think it's important to come back uh, to position of the balloon for pot. I think uh, we should again try to better explain, should we cross the carina while doing pot? Who wants to answer? No? Yes? 
Well, you shouldn't cross the carina. You yeah. should be up to the carina. So the shoulder of the balloon should be just beyond the proximal part of the branch so that you can o you're opening it up. You're not going across the carina and risking distorting the distal vessel. Exactly. If you go completely across the carina, then you're doing exactly you the opposite. You actually shift metal into the side branch and you compromise the side branch. But that requires careful selection of your view. Exactly. And that, so make, taking care exactly. to make sure that you position the balloon correctly in the right view will take a little while. Yeah, because sometimes if you use two orthogonal views, in one it looks perfect, Correct. then you go to another one and you see that you are two millimeter down from Carina, and actually if you fix in one projection, it's not good. And you should also know type of balloons that you have, because the relationship between distal marker position and uh, maximum achieved diameter vary from device to device. So, Machi, what is the final result here was optimal and geographically? And geographically, the, the, the result was uh, quite okay, I think very optimal. We didn't check with, uh, with uh, intravascular imaging, um, but uh, I think that Looks we terrific, all agree <laughs> that, that the result is, is, is terrific. Uh, and respecting the step-by-step, -step, uh, what we just mentioned, I think the procedure is not that difficult as it may. Exactly, uh, yeah. as it looks when yeah. you just Actually, this the... case was done by my young fellow with just my assistance uh, and uh, without big issues, yeah, so I'm really happy and given to Given the complexity this. of the original lesion, yeah. it looks uh, fantastic. It looks fantastic, and you can clearly see bigger diameter, proximal, smaller. Uh, I really congratulate. Uh, to summarize, uh, we need words of wisdom. Adrian, can you summarize the steps of the DK crash so for this us? This is our cartoon, and we can see, starting in the top left, we've got the stent being deployed with the balloon in position. The second step is to inflate our uh, crushing balloon. And then the third step is perhaps use a bigger balloon to ensure that crush. We've completely now crushed the uh, side branch origin with a slightly bigger balloon. That allows us to wire accurately. We're going to wire uh, proximally or mid, and then we're going to uh, do our first kiss. And you can see that in the cartoon. Having done that, we're then going to implant our stent, and then we're going to pot. The pot balloon in the middle position there is perhaps a little deep, and I might be a little bit higher than that. But having done that, I've then got to rewire. So I'm rewiring the side branch now carefully again, mid or proximal, and then I'm going to do my second kiss. And then we do my final pot, which optimizes the uh, proximal vessel and makes sure that I've got a nice round lumen. And ultimately, as you can see there, I've ended up with two fully expanded stents with a relatively short area of crush and fully optimized uh, result in the side branch and particularly in the main vessel. Uh, I think that was great, really step by step clear. Uh, this was uh, step by step technical. And let's briefly discuss also clinical application. We have new guidelines. Uh, Machi, what is your comment on recommendation for DK Crash 2B? Yeah, for the first main? time we have this recommendation. I think that this recommendation is a little bit too premature. We still need more studies. We all know some, you know, issues uh, with the uh, with the um, DK Crash 5 study because of the big crossover. Almost 50% patient crossover from one arm to the other one. Uh, I think that uh, our colleagues from Asia were great in a, are great in a decade crash, but uh, they didn't do a great job for provisional stenting, and that's why we had we observed like three percent or a little bit more than three percent of stent thrombosis in the provisional arm, whereas in decay crash arm there was only 0 0.4 uh, of stent thrombosis. So, so I think we still need uh, more studies, more data to tell that, that this is really a uh, desired or recommended uh, technique for, for complex bifurcation. But that's why we've got to do the trials. That's yeah, why EBC are doing their trial, looking at one stent versus two stent in exactly. true bifurcation. EBC main is ongoing. Yeah, and I think, you know, ultimately, uh, it's a great tribute to the Asian group that they did the trial. Exactly. And then ultimately, if we yeah. want to change the guidelines, you've got to do the trials. Yeah. But and, that, and I think uh, it's it, it, it just evidence-based medicine, which intervention really leads the, the way on. And yeah. I think it was a, it's a great tribute to them. If I, if I can add, uh, I have to admit that this is one of the most complex patient population that was tested in DK Crash 5. If you read carefully QCA, the mean length of the circumflex lesion was 16.7 millimeters. 
And uh, I'm even surprised that crossover rate was not higher because this is really 20 millimeter long lesion. And we know from Ben stent that results of stenting are better than result of simple POBA. So maybe uh, we should interpret cautiously this kind of recommendation and really apply it in that kind of population. So it's really for left main with large and diffusely diseased circumflex with favorable angle and if possible with image guidance. And I think if we apply that kind of scenario, DK crush is really technique that can uh, serve the purpose and really achieve optimal results. Done by experts who knew how to do it. Done by experts and you have to do it. Exactly. So, uh, uh, dear colleagues, uh, it's uh, the end of uh, our fourth webinar in a series of bifurcation educational uh, continuum. Uh, we hope you have found it useful. And on behalf of my colleagues, Maciej and Adrian, I would like to thank uh, Metronic for supporting this independent series of educational programs on bifurcations. I would like to thank you all for following us and for sending so many nice and important relevant questions. We tried to address most of them and I hope our answers were clear and helpful for you. Next webinar on bifurcations will be specifically focused on left main PCI and I hope you will join us again and help us also understand better what are the problems that we need to address during the webinar. So please send your feedback and I wish you all the best from three of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.